Good evening, Moira Mackey. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. But it's Mackay, not Mackay. I can never say. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Irish just can't pronounce things. <laughs> no. Well, there's lots of different versions of Mackay, but that's I say yeah, you hear quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so lovely to chat with you, and thank you so much for doing our online show. I'm really thrilled, and I just adore the video you actually sent us as well. Um, can you tell us a bit about yourself? How how did you become um, an artist? First of all, well. I, all my family are pretty creative. Uh, my mum was always making things and doing things. My dad's quite creative, but it was probably my uncle, who's a, who was called John Prentice, who was an artist, who took both me and my cousin under his wing and taught us to paint from a really early age. So that's kind of probably where it started. I would say he was my biggest influence. Um, just painted all my life really and made things. Wow. It's, and, it's uh, in the blood. And did you go yeah. to art college? Yeah, I went to Glasgow School of Art. Um, and although because I'd been painting for years, I was being sensible because I'm a bit of a business head as well, I think. <laughs> and I thought, well, I can paint. So there's no point going to paint. I should go and learn a trade. So um, I did textile design. And so I did a uh, specialized in printed textiles but even towards the end of that I'd kind of moved it on to painting onto textile so I was painting onto velvets and oh. into them and stuff which isn't so dissimilar to the look of what I'm doing now actually like over 20 years later <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so when did you develop this your own this style of work was well, that quite immediate, or did it take time? No, that took quite a long time because I worked as a, like freelance textile designer for a while, and I did lots of painting. I'd I'd won a um, art bursary, and I went to Russia and studied Russian folk art. So wow. that was the first That's thing. Amazing. I <laughs> Painted lots of furniture and things like that, <laughs> yeah. and then I think it was I sort of did a few art and craft type things and then I maybe when I could afford to I thought I'm going to get back into painting and also I had children um, but then when I was painting what I realized was the colors that you could get with paint just weren't as vibrant mm -hmm. as what I could get with felt and I had seen somebody when I was at art school making a felt coat and although I didn't think it was that impressive at the time, I just remember that the fibres were really beautiful because I buy them ready dyed. And then you get a depth of colour yeah. that actually I just couldn't get with paint. So I kind of started to develop that and that was over 20 years ago and I have been developing them ever since. Wow, it's it's amazing. I mean, I've I've never seen anything like it before. I remember when I first saw your work in Edinburgh Art Fair about two years ago, I was just completely blown away. It's just spectacular. And then when I saw how you start to finish a piece, it's extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> it is quite magical. It is, it's isn't it? <laughs> like it's sheet pool and soap and hot water that actually mats it all together. And wow. I think what I did really, I was taking a traditional craft, uh, but putting a more fine art application onto it to make mm -hmm. it, um, maybe to make something new. Because one of the things I noticed whilst at art school and in the whole, you know, art world was the divide between sort of fine art and craft mm -hmm. or makers. And I think I wanted to do something that could, that married the two and, sort of try to bridge that gap a bit yeah, so to yeah. start with and that's why I also wanted to present them like paintings but what I really like is when people get up closer and they say hey it's not <laughs> paint you know it's even more interesting know, it all the time. yeah they're just I mean the reaction is unbelievable isn't it people and you you are you do classes as well so you do teach your your own method as well yeah well I was approached a uh, quite a few years ago now to do a book by Search Press um, showing people how to do it really um, and I agreed to that because it's uh, although I had developed something that was very new 
it's also a really lovely medium to work with and I know that people get lots of enjoyment so I thought well you know I do have to share this around so I did I've now done three books um, yeah. and I believe they've sold over 40,000 copies today wow. well so, done amazing so there's lots of people doing it now but because of yeah. I've met a couple of new groupies in the gallery actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but because I have been invited all over the world to teach it which has been great so it kind of opened a lot of doors and let me travel to places that we'd never have been which is great so how do you manage it all how do you do because you, you have a you have your own gallery selling your own work as well yeah well and well actually until sort of covid i didn't really work in the gallery that much i did right at the beginning right but then i didn't I have kind of gone back in now and what I'm finding is that's been quite nice to have that contact with customers mm. again. Um, but I don't sleep much and <laughs> <laughs> I know I work, I'm a bit of a workaholic. So, you know, yeah. my studio, I can have like night shifts and luckily my studio uh, attached to my house, which is really handy. So wow. I managed to juggle them all. <laughs> So, and how like how did you find the lockdown and COVID and um, did it affect your work? Um, well, I hate to say that I really enjoyed it because I know for lots of people, you know, it's been a awful <laughs> time. But I did. Really, I really enjoyed uh, it being the first time in many, many years that I just had to Took stop. Time out. I didn't really stop, but. I didn't, for one, I didn't have to think about the gallery, like is somebody turned up, is it open or all these mm. kinds of things. So it did feel a bit like time to just take stock um, and relax. And yeah, whilst I was still doing lots of bits of work, I did enjoy it and it just gave me time to breathe. And, and now the work that I'm doing, I think it does change, you know, I've just got a bit more... Yeah. I think um, a lot of our artists have said that that it's given them the a time out just to explore the ideas that they wanted to and I've yeah. said this before but the work that's coming in now into the gallery is is just mm -hmm. really special it's if you can see it that everyone's been forced to take their time on, yeah. on the piece uh -huh. um, have you tried anything new what while you're in lockdown or um well I did do a couple of things new because in our bubble or whatever, um, I discovered that one of my son's girlfriends that was staying with us could actually film and edit. Ah, oh, brilliant. It would be my intention <laughs> to do an online tutorial, a course. Um, I'd already done a short one. Um, so within that time, we filmed a six-week course. It actually even went out, you know. Wow. I had students from all over the world, lots That's from my <laughs> So I did you that. <laughs> so that that was kind of mad and it was really nice as well because it brought together all these people that had the same you know an interest in what I do and yeah doing that wow. it's a nice sort of community a world community yeah. um, art project really so that was great um and also I've just been developing work so I've done a sort of series of I got into trees and into very colourful, actually, when, at a time that it all seemed quite, you know, down and the COVID and what have you, I found myself doing some really, really bright sky and seascapes, one of mm -hmm. which I believe is behind you. I love it. I lo as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't and notice it went brighter. Or <laughs> yeah, it, it went very bright and I think it was just as a reaction to you know well just us needing something yeah no I totally yeah I agree I mean I think a lot of people had done that and done it's it's yeah it's it's strangely bizarre how everyone it was affected everyone in different ways so are you doing online courses now that you're you're you will we say your daughter-in-law <laughs> <laughs> is this um, something she's that now. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> she's had enough <laughs> Yeah. Is it something that now people can do online with you? Is uh, online courses? Yeah. Well, I I had always done a sort of short online course, but this 
the last one I did over lockdown was the first big one to see how it got. And yeah. so it also very handily, I have a filmmaker guy that lives around the corner. So <laughs> we have last week been filming, last couple of weeks, a, a 12 week course that I'm doing as well. And and it's 90% um, of the people that have booked already were people that were on my last one. So no I think, uh, <laughs> and, and, can you like are you aiming for the absolute beginner like uh, someone like myself who could never has never even touched any felt yes is it it is is it okay it's for anyone because it's it's kind of what you make of it and actually what i find is well felt you know experienced felt makers are probably the worst people because they have been taught all these things and what I do isn't really felt making it's sort of painting with fibers so mm -hmm. I undo all the things so these people <laughs> do do join but actually um complete novices are the best because they're really open to it and they still you know, do great things or artists as well mm -hmm. I have lots of artists join and you can see they're used to working with paint wow and, but they're still it's really easy to sort of just change your medium you know mm -hmm. you're just laying on colored fibers um, and yeah so it's it's open to anyone and it's quite a forgiving medium so yeah, yeah. Well. and and in your video you we can see you that you go out and sit you it do you do that for most of your works or was <laughs> Sadly, I don't. No, <laughs> it didn't look really good in the video. <laughs> well, it was to do. It was to make a video. And if I'm abroad, I'm working abroad, and it's mm -hmm. lovely and sunny, then I, it's the best thing to do to work outside. But the reality is that even if you get a little bit of wind, um, it it flies away. So it's not great. <laughs> I don't know. I was on Landscape Artist of the Year a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, if you if you saw that and you can still see it on catch up it became really windy and actually it was all flying <laughs> off into the water and so it's it's not a great idea but i do encourage people and myself to go out and sketch or take photos so i do work quite a lot from photos and then i'll have them on a screen and, and do, do you sketch everything out first um I don't. Um, mm. I used to, but I, you know, I don't really um, you, do that. You know what piece. Now, yeah, you kind of you're an expert at, at <laughs> what. You want. But, but the people I'm teaching, I'm telling them to do that because that's obviously the best way to start. <laughs> and where where do, where is your inspiration from? Are these all local scenes, or is um, it wherever you travel as well? Well, the one behind you is. That wasn't really local, I guess. That was a bit, well, we couldn't travel, you know. So yeah. it's literally taken, I've got thousands of photos. So I was looking at photos, I think, from the west coast of Scotland. Lots of my inspiration comes from the Highlands. Or here in the Scottish borders where I live is really beautiful. Mm. So I would say mainly Scotland is my inspiration. But really, wherever I go, I get inspired by it. Yeah, you can't help it, I suppose. And have you been over to Ireland? Uh, only once. But I do, well, I've had lots of students from Ireland come to me because in my studio, um, I, I don't do that many, but I do a few a year, usually. Um, at the beginning of the year, I do some workshops and I have a huge amount of Irish students. So there are quite, there are possibly quite a few people in Ireland doing this now. <laughs> <laughs> actually i haven't seen anything i haven't seen <laughs> All right. well that's good <laughs> definitely not up to the standard that you're producing have, who has been your biggest influence i mean is this because i mean was this so you it sounds like this was a, a medium you kind of did all by yourself but was there any any artist that influenced you over the years i don't think there was any particular artist i mean i think my uncle um, mm -hmm. was my biggest influence and he does lots of skies and um, he really liked his skies and it's funny and both my cousin who paints as well I've noticed that actually we're really into our skies and I think it is really from 
you know, from him teaching us or being inspired by his paintings. I mean, I look at lots of, you know, lots of artists, but I don't think there's any one that I'm particularly in, influenced by. And I think it's more just looking at landscapes and looking yeah. up to the sky and colour. I'm like, colour is my passion. Yeah, I'm interested and I'm always looking at other artists' work, but mm. I can't, I don't think there's ever been a mm. complete favourite. I mean, at the moment, I'm working on um, a sort of collection of tree pieces, and they're very, um, not that I'm looking at the, you know, the, um, the old masters, but they're kind yeah. of, they seem to have that feel about them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And you you said you were always painting. So have you any paintings lying about your house or have you um, kept it? I've not got many paintings, but strangely yes. what I do have at the moment, and this was another thing through lockdown, it made me realise that I just really wanted to paint. And actually when I was looking, you know, the artist support pledge, and there was lots of things on social media, um, and suddenly I had time to look at lots of artists' work. And I was looking at lots of abstract painting. And although it's not what I do, I was just really enjoying it. And um, so what I have done is um, I'm getting a painting studio built at the top of my garden. Um, oh my God. <laughs> to start, start painting again, because actually what I do now, this studio here is very nice, but the fibers and everything, it's very clean. And yeah. you now if I want to paint, I have to, drag all the paints out and then get rid of all the okay you know, fibers and they don't really mix so i thought the only way i'm really going to be able to paint again and possibly do some mosaics as well which I've yeah. oh wow gosh it's, can't wait to see all this <laughs> have a dirt a space that can be dirty and you know set up just for that so that's my yeah. plan that i'm going to god you, you, you really you never stop do you <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing with you why is you you have your business head as well like you're so efficient when it comes to dates and deadlines and yeah i'm very impressed <laughs> well i think you have to do that you know and i realized i think my family are all sort of business heads i guess so i've been brought up with that but what i have learned is that you do have as an artist you know, and sadly, lots of artists don't have that. Mm. It's not just about being good at what you do. Um, you have to be able to market it and sell it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a shame. That's a thing that lots of artists mm. find more difficult. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just another question. What about commissions? Do you get people commissioning you to do certain areas or do you like yeah. doing them? You do. Yeah. Okay. I get quite... Actually, and that was another thing that I noticed over lockdown or since lockdown, I've had loads of commissions. Um, and again, I thought that's maybe people just having the time to look yeah. online and consider. But I get, um, I just finished one last week for somebody as a wedding present. So that was a sort of river and some, some bridge that was meaningful to them, you know, where they grew up. Um, and people send me images of a landscape near them or, you know. I going to ask you that. So you're happy say, if somebody sends you a picture, you can work from that. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of hope that it's nothing too crazy. But <laughs> generally, it's usually just quite, you know, nice landscapes or houses or near their house. Um, yeah. I did a commission recently and it was a rather large house but then when I went to take photos of it um actually although it was a you know it was a big house this the grounds were so beautiful that I just did them all really and he was happy with that you know that was good what what is the largest size you've ever done um well I can I can do like a huge huge piece but the mm -hmm. largest is as large as a piece of glass comes in because I do have to frame them behind glass. I know you need that really good non-reflective glass, don't you, to protect the work. Yeah. And, you're and I think the big is, yeah. So that make that obviously would make them heavy. So I think they come in about three three feet wide or something. So that that's as big as they can go, unfortunately. <laughs>
<laughs> you could do it without framing, but I don't think, well, it probably wouldn't fade, but I think it would be lovely nesting materials for, you know. Oh, it just hung like a tapestry almost. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah you, and you could do that, but I just, it probably wouldn't last, you know, mm -hmm. they'll last forever behind glass. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so interesting. I could go on and on, but I won't. I'd better stop it there. <laughs> thank you so much, Roy. It's just been fascinating. And uh, I hope everyone enjoys the, the week of showing your new pieces. They're stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yes, thank you. Nice job. Oh, and to you. And good luck with all the adventures of painting <laughs> and mosaic making. <laughs> we'll watch this space. Yes. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.